STV, votre télé. News on STV coming up. Peter Mafani Musonge and his team are discoursing with the Northwest population to seek a way out of the Anglophone crisis. The National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism is in Bamenda at a time when human rights groups decry the need to drop weapons. Cameroon's Fika Food Normalization Committee members will not have a second mandate. Barista Jedone Api made this clear in Yaoundé today during the adoption of the Feka Food 2018 calendar. Those were top stories. Good evening and thanks for joining us. The humanitarian community in Cameroon has launched an emergency response plan to respond to urgent humanitarian needs in the northwest and southwest regions through financial aid. Details with John Bosama. 160,000 people have migrated within the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, and above 21,000 Cameroonians have been identified as refugees in neighboring Nigeria. Akwa Ibom, Benue, and Cross River State are now home to many who have fled their homes, villages, and country. These figures are on the rise since November 2017, according to the United Nations Department of Humanitarian Affairs. In a report released by the organization on May 29, 2018, a humanitarian committee of Cameroon has launched an emergency plan to attend to urgent humanitarian needs in the northwest and southwest regions. A call for tender to raise 15 million US dollars to assist displaced persons and prevent any forthcoming difficulties within three months. In the same report, the political tension is said to have affected 3.3 million people around Cameroon, making the population vulnerable. Members of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism are in the Northwest region to talk with the population. During working sessions, participants suggested inclusive dialogue, which will be chaired by President Paul Bia himself. Lovet Bear reports. Members of the Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism are in the Northwest region for the second phase of the Listen to the People's Mission. Chaired by its president, Peter Mafani Musonge, a workshop was organized between members of this commission and the population for frank talks. Participants who included people from different walks of life who have been affected by the Anglophone crisis directly or indirectly stress on the issue of killings, burning down of villages, forceful arrests including the unfair jail terms that has been slammed on some Anglophone detainees, suggesting that all those who are in jail should be freed for an inclusive dialogue to take place shared by the President of the Republic himself. Some of the participants were equally bitter with the word terrorist that has been used to describe some Anglophones. According to them, if the government knows the real definition of a terrorist, then they would know who the real terrorists in Cameroon are. After listening to the troubled speakers, the president of the commission says he is impressed with the turnout and has assured the population that their concerns will be channeled to hierarchy. People came out in their numbers and we had a frank discussion. We listened to their ideas, their suggestions to help our country come out of the crisis situation. And we took note of all of them because they came from the bottom of the hearts of the people and we're going to submit them to hierarchy. The chairman of the Social Democratic Front does not believe that this commission is capable of providing a solution to the crisis as he says the people would talk and talk, but yet nothing would be done.
members of this commission would be holding working sessions with target groups in the region. During sessions between members of the commission chaired by Peter Mafani Musonge and the population, the Northwest Governor and his entourage were sent out of the hall to encourage the people to talk freely. Love it there once again. The council that is supposed to be convened after every two years has been delayed for four years now and has caused some lawyers in the region to drag the president of the General Assembly and the president of the Bar Council to court. The case appeared in the Mezam High Court on May 31st before Justice Mbaki Vivian and was adjourned to June 21st. But what is the matter at hand? Barrister Acha Collins, the plaintiff's lawyer, explains. I am here to ensure that the law is respected. If anybody who wants to use the bar council or the bar association to do politics should transform himself into a politician or form a political party and not to go about giving flimsy excuses as to why they want to continue to hang on to power in the name of crisis in the Northwest and Southwest region. First of all, a lot of activities have been taking place in the Northwest and Southwest regions. We have the Fenasco Games, we have the University Games that took place in the Northwest, we have the Female Nations Cup, it was played in Blimbe, that is West Cameroon or North Southwest, we have the SDF Convention that just took place. What is it about the Bar Council? If not, those who are propagating these false ideas have an interest in benefiting from whatever they call uh, the Anglophone class. As even Barisa Kemende says, they cannot continue, they cannot organize the General Assembly of the Bar because he's Bar Council member and representative for the Northwest region. Is it proper when senatorial elections that were organized a few days ago saw him being elected as senator? Those are all flimsy excuses. Baris Tangala, sitting in for Nico Hale and Nikamga, had this to say. The, the general atmosphere in the country requires a lot of security. But the process okay. which is before the court is not saying where they, where they want the general assembly to be held. So I cannot say whether the ground is conducive or is not conducive. I mean, you cannot guarantee that the government will send as much soldiers to protect lawyers as if they were senators, as if they were parliamentarians. You understand that? So that is where... There is the, 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 I think there is no level ground. That was rather Lovet Bear reporting on the case pitting a college of lawyers in Bamenda against the leadership of the Cameroon Bar Council Association, which has been adjourned after a hearing today. A new project championed by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development to help beef up town planning in major cities in Cameroon has been presented to actors involved in the housing chain here in Douala. Henry Wana tells us more. As part of effort to ameliorate town planning in major cities in Cameroon, the government through the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development has embarked on a nationwide crusade to preach their aspirations and exchange ideas with municipal and other actors involved in the housing chain to ensure the success of the project. According to Professor Esso Elame, Cabinet Director General of 2E and Partners, the project is destined to transform major towns in the country to meet modern standards. Qui a donné les instructions au MINDU de prendre toutes les dispositions avec le soutien de l'ONU Habitat pour que le Cameroun puisse avoir une politique de la ville. An initiative greatly welcomed by municipal authorities in the city of Douala, who all dream to make the economic hub a better city for its denizens. This forum is welcome because it comes at the time where the town of Douala has grown very large and in a disorderly way and so with this we'll be able to bring out problems that we face on daily life here in Douala. Problems like uh, hygiene and sanitation we have to see in which way we'll better sensitize the population because we know that this is because of ignorance that this population cannot uh, respect the simple rules of the town. It is therefore left in the hands for the government of Cameroon to match her words with action to enable Cameroonians feel the wind of change in the social housing sector, which has for several years remained a thorn in the flesh. Catholic Christians today remember the death of one of the years, Bishop Jean-Marie Benoit Ballard. 
The prelate of the Bafia Diocese was reported missing and found dead. Let's revisit the sad story. Life has returned to normal at the Bafia Diocese weeks, months, and now a year after the tragic death of Bishop Jean-Marie Benoit Bala. His court seat is now being kept warm by his lordship, Abraham Kome. It was on May 31st, 2017, that a Catholic bishop was reported missing. Eyebrows were raised, Catholic faithfuls and family members began panicking, but there were hopes all was going to be fine. 72 hours later, Bishop Jean-Marie Benoit Bala discovered at Ebebda under the Sanaga River was breathless and rigid. The son of Mbankomo in the Mufu and Akono division of the central region of Cameroon was no, no more. While administrative officials, Catholic authorities, family and onlookers gathered to see for themselves and begin investigations, many made it the slogan on social media, Je suis dans l'eau. This was the written word found in the prelate's vehicle and some other documents making it difficult to uncover the mystery. Mystery or tragedy, hard to determine. A post-mortem exercise was conducted by Cameroonian experts which found signs of torture, adding Benoit Bala was murdered and dumped into the river. The noise became louder. Different stories popped up, but nothing could bring back Jean-Marie Benoit Bala. Interpol intervened and commissioned a second autopsy by two German doctors who reported the direct opposite of the first exercise, saying there was no trace of violence on the body of the deceased. Thereafter, the Central Court of Appeal determined drowning as the most probable cause of death. Unable to bear the pain, the National Episcopal Conference of Cameroon retaliated, openly declaring it was not the first inexplicable disappearance of one of the years, demanding government to tell the truth to all. Life continued at the Bafia Diocese with Catholic Christians Memory, just like several other Cameroonians. Finally, Bishop Jean-Marie Benoit Bala gathered a huge crowd at Our Lady of Victory Cathedral in Yaoundé, who came not to listen to the prelate's homily, rather to bid farewell. Goodbye was equally what the apostolic nuncio Pioro Piopo told Cameroonians before leaving shortly after the burial of Bishop Bala. Sure, the dead had left the Sanaga waters for the land of the ancestors, but his memory lives on. Jean-Marie Benoit Bala's demise is not the desired end for a servant of God, but only, yes, only the Lord knows best. Tobacco and heart disease is the focus of this year's World No Tobacco Day 2018 celebrated on this 31st of May. Marking this year's event in Douala today, the Cameroon Consumers Foundation, FOCACO, took the message to schools to discourage youths from consuming the drug. Henry Wana. Unless anti-tobacco actions are increased, many shall continue to die around the world because of tobacco use, according to the World Health Organization. Stem from this fact, the Cameroon Consumers Foundation took the campaign May 31, 2018, on the occasion of the World No Tobacco Day in the city of Douala to encourage primary school pupils to denounce the consumption of tobacco. We chose children because children can advise the, 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 the parents, can advise the neighbor to the danger of tobacco. So we say no to tobacco. We say no to tobacco because tobacco uh, gives uh, cancer, 
many, many types of cancer. So we want to have a population who is in health, good health. A message the people quickly assimilated and expressed their views through recitations. Perhaps if the government of Cameroon could increase taxes on tobacco products to make them less affordable, then the habit of tobacco consumption could possibly fit out. We now join Darling Fuju to look at health effects of tobacco consumption. First cause of avoidable deaths in Cameroon and in the world. Tobacco, according to the Ministry of Public Health, he is about 66,000 people each year in Cameroon. Over 6 million deaths are recorded in the world, consequence of tobacco consumption. Uh, difficult, but what you know in the world, every year you have 6 million of people die of tobacco-related diseases. Around 10% of Cameroonians smoke, and this is too much for a country like Cameroon. Direct tobacco consumers and non-smokers are exposed to a number of chronic diseases with cancer topping the list. Also have respiratory diseases, diabetes, and what you have to know is that the tobacco is a main factor. If you don't have, if you smoke, you can easily get diabetes, uh, hypertension, and all these people who die for AVC, they say crisp cardiac. Most of them is due to cardiac disease. Even in a pregnant woman, you can have uh, stillbirth, uh, children who are not uh, with uh, weight, correct weight. So every, pot, if every people is exposed, whether you smoke directly or you live with uh, somebody who smoke around. Most of these diseases medics see are leading cause of death in the world and could be avoided through intensive sensitization on the dangers of tobacco. Cameroon's public health ministry plans to reduce about 5% of neonatal, infant and maternal death each year. Statistics reveal over 6,000 women die each year in Cameroon during delivery and 28 deaths out of 1,000 childbirths are recorded in 2014 with the East Region, Adamawa, North and Far North most vulnerable. Darling Fuji. Going by 2016 statistics from the Ministry of Public Health, about 6,000 women die every year in Cameroon during labor. Neonatal and infant mortality, though persistent, have witnessed a drop from 37 deaths out of 1,000 child births recorded in 1998 to 28 deaths out of 1,000 births in 2014. Statistics presented during the evaluation of the national program against neonatal, infant and maternal mortality in Yaoundé reveal that about 22,000 newborns die prematurely every year in the country. That is 61 babies per day. The East region, Adamawa, North and Far North regions being the most vulnerable, a health plan was launched to evaluate and counter the problem. This situation is assez grave for our country because even if it's a single decade of infant, the situation is alarming. The death of a child or a mother is a serious health concern. A plan was implemented in the most affected regions to reevaluate the gravity and put an end to these deaths. Though results are yet to be reviewed, I think there is a possibility of an amelioration. Despite the reduction of its 2018 budget, the Ministry of Public Health hopes to reduce about 5% of neonatal, infant, and maternal mortality in Cameroon. The Imam of the Boya Central Mosque, Al Haji Mohammed Abubakar, has told Muslims in the southwest region to shun all forms of violence and put Allah in front for peace to reign. Meantime, prayers and fasting continues ahead of the feast of Ramadan. Pelagi
It is a period when the Muslims undergo fasting and prayers throughout the national territory. During this period of prayers, Muslims get closer to Allah while ensuring to stay away from every sinful activities. Some Muslim men even go to the extent of leaving their homes to lodge in hotels in order to avoid sexual intercourse with their spouses. In the southwest region, most Muslim faithfuls have stressed their prayers on the Anglophone crisis, praying to Allah for lasting solutions while revoking the present killings, displacements, panic, fear, tension that exists among the military and civilians in this part of the country. Praying at this time, especially during this month of Ramadan, will help solve this crisis. And not only the Muslims, even the Christians, faithfuls need to pray. And we need to, we need to be prayerful because prayers can help all the type of problems you, you have. Of course, we are praying also for the month, for the crisis going on, the Anglophone crisis that maybe God can help us and we are confident that the Almighty God can help us to succeed out about the crisis. At the Boya Central Mosque, the Imam called on the worshippers to stay firm and faithful to Allah, believing that Allah will bring up lasting solutions to the problems plaguing the nation Cameroon. The Cameroonians we should live to be patriotic. Let us live life that God has given us. You can live only once and not twice. If you kill a life, not that you will be questioned for it. He further called on the concerned parties to put up Frank and dialogue in order to restore the integrity of Cameroon. People should be more committed in this aspect of talking about dialogue. There should be seriousness on both camps. The one month fasting that has been carried out every day from dawn to sunset is an annual religious practice for Muslims in Cameroon. Let's get news out of Cameroon with VOA. Activists are hitting the streets of Maiduguri to warn people about the dangers of human trafficking. These are people who have come to Maiduguri to run away from the terrorist group Boko Haram. But even in Maiduguri, where they found refuge, other dangers lurk. Human traffickers are seducing IDPs, internally displaced persons, using false promises of employment. So later on, when they carry them out, then later they will not even give them, they, they will not give them the, the job. Then they will start starting selling them like slaves. And we have some victims. After we started this campaign, we got some victims that they have occurred this, uh, this, they faced these challenges. Nana Abdullahi, an orphan, was selling goods on Medugri streets to make money when she met a man who said he could help her. I told him I would like a job so that I can take care of myself. He said okay, and he took me. I thought we were going someplace like Kano, but when we got there, he went all the way with me to Niger. After a month of what she described as an ordeal, Nana ran away and found her way back to Nigeria. More than a million IDPs live in Maiduguri, the capital of northeastern Nigeria's Borno State. This is where Boko Haram started, launching attacks across the region that have so far killed more than 30,000 people. There are about a dozen IDP camps in the city, and the government says they are frequent targets for traffickers. People are coming there in the evening for recruiting, I can say, taking young girls, going away with them. Members of Nigeria's anti-trafficking agency distribute pamphlets to warn of the dangers. But some say their choices in Maiduguri are limited. Mariam Haruna was smuggled into Saudi Arabia where she worked illegally as a domestic helper. I spent two years there working. Unfortunately, one day when I was coming back from work, I got caught and was deported back home. Despite having to pay back the man who trafficked her, Miriam says she would rather go back to Saudi Arabia because her life there was better than her life here. But these activists hope she goes back legally. 
They say people who have suffered and survived Boko Haram attacks should not have to fall victim again to human traffickers. Chika Odua in Meduguri, Nigeria, for VOA News. In sports, the FICA Foot Normalization Committee of Barista Judone Api has this May 31st unveiled the election. A calendar of the Cameroon's football governing body, Fika Foot. This was at a meeting in Yaoundé. Heroina reports. Nous sommes enfin heureux de vous annoncer que le 31 août 2018, notre mission s'achève. Those were the words of Barrister Judene Happy at the press conference this Thursday, May 31, announcing the end of their mission at the Chinga House come August 31, 2018. He went further to announce the holding of the Fekafoot General Assembly on June 23 by the 2009 Executive Committee members to adopt the electoral text which will equally pave the way for the holding of regional elections of the body on August 3, 2018, as well as the national election of August 17 to produce new members in the Executive Committee of Fekafoot who in return shall have to elect a new president at the helm of Fekafoot. De demain. 1er juin 2018, ce qui conduira la convocation de l'Assemblée générale de 2009 qui examinera et adoptera ces nouveaux statuts. However, unlike the 2013 Normalization Committee that disbursed millions of francs to organize elections that were later cancelled by FIFA, no amount of money have been announced by Dodene Happy and Co. to carry out elections this year. The stage is now set for those aspiring to parade the corridors managing football in Cameroon to start scouting for support from the Electoral College, for one thing is certain, Cameroonian soccer family hope to see a free and fair election to put an end to the usual normalization committee institution in Cameroon and forge ahead in the development of soccer in the country. The president of the Literal Site Committee for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations has expressed satisfaction at advancement of works at sites earmarked to host games and visitors. Samuel Diodoné Vardivoir conducted the exercise today, prelude to the third CAF inspection. John Paul Sema. A visit which took Governor Samuel Diodoné Vardivoir Boa to the AMAC structures that are integral for the country's hopes to host the 2019 African Cup of Nations. The Littoral Site Committee details the inspected hotel infrastructures in the city as well as the Douala International Airport where positive response were given to the recommendations brought on the table as far as improving the structure is concerned to better serve the visiting delegation. His tour also took him to the Gynaco Obstetric and Pediatric Hospital, the Lacantini as well as the General Hospital, where he held working sessions with those in charge. As far as the sporting infrastructures are concerned, the first stop was at the Japoma Stadium, the pride jewel of the region, where the contractors assured the site committee that they will finish the stadium and its two training pitches by the end of this year, even though they are encountering certain difficulties. Fields. Pitch subcontractors, machinery, specific equipment, Gabon. They just send it by truck. But unfortunately, the truck approximately five days waiting in Cameroon Gabon borders. Custom officer does not let get in. Even though that project has got custom exemption. And we don't have any problem in Douala custom bringing any material. Our subcontractors material sent on the name of Yeni uh, At the moment, they have over 1,430 workers, with the number of Cameroonian workers expected to be augmented in the upcoming days and a completion rate of 50% for the complex. At the Bepanda Omnispo Stadium, as well as the two training pitches in Bonamusa and Bapele Bay in Aqua, construction works are moving at a steady pace as the third CAV inspection mission to Cameroon is expected in the upcoming days. But officials of the region in charge of this site 
are optimistic about the advancement of works thus far. Sent to Zeki Boskert, Director of Works at the Japoma Stadium and the Governor of the Littoral Region, Samuel Dedone Ivaha Dibua. Of today, the progress is uh, 50%. We erected 750 tribune elements. There is only 2,500 tribune elements. This means that we already installed 34-35% of tribune elements. But as a whole progress, we are also making the mechanical works inside. You have seen it. The electrical works are ongoing. Plumbing works are ongoing. Some uh, wall partitions, plastering, painting are ongoing. As a total in stadium, progress is around 50%. But total complex progress is around 35 34%. Because we are working also in the two training fields. Uh, all the drainage works are completed. We completed the nursery. The nursery for the planting the grass for the stadium. It is ready. On Sunday or Saturday, we are going to put the grass seed, and you will see in 10 days the grass is growing. That's uh, the Douala City uh, Site uh, Committee is. Uh, satisfied for what we have seen in the field. Uh, we have, uh, as far as the uh, sports uh, infrastructures are concerned, we have uh, more than 50% of the rate of executions. And also for the state of our hospitals, all of them are doing well. And uh, we can just say that uh, the rate now is good and everybody is uh, on task. So we are expecting to have those infrastructures uh, before the, 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 the D-date. And uh, many of them have some difficulties that we are just solving uh, progressively. And uh, today we can say that uh, we are quite ready to welcome this uh, Cup of African Cup of Nations here in Douala. Thank you, sir. Match is counting for the 22 in the MTN Elite One Championship were played this afternoon with the following results. Apeges 3, Eglo Royal 2, Bambutos 2, 0 for Fortuna FC. Edding Sport had 3 against 0 for Fovu of Baham. Stado Rena 1, New Star 0, Union de Douala 1 all tie against Future FC. The 23 matches will be coming up this weekend as Koton Sport remains the head with 47 points. That brings us to the end of today's APM Newscast. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. STV, votre télé.